All right, Stoger STR9 versus Glock 17. The reason I'm doing this comparison is apparently a lot of people say, magazine editors included, that uh, this is a Glock clone, which they look very different, although I can see where they're getting that because underneath they're almost identical in the inner workings here and the rails and whatnot, so we'll break them down and show you that. I will say, though, I mean... Looking at them and handling them, they both feel completely different. Of course, there's the similarities. The triggers are very similar. We're going to go over all that and more here, uh, but mostly I think the reason they're calling it uh, Glock copycat or clone or whatever, striker fire like a Glock, and it pretty much works exactly like a Glock, but they do feel very different in the hand. But uh, we're going to put them together today, side-by-side -side comparison, and see what the differences are and see which one I like better. Which I gotta say, check out the review video I just did on this. Um, I'm really liking this thing. I love my Glocks. Um, real good with the Glock 17 here. Uh, but I did pretty dang well with this one as well. So this is gonna be an interesting comparison. So these are both pretty much the exact same size as each other. Obviously there's you know slight differences of millimeters and whatnot, but they're the same size pistol more or less. There's the Steger on top of the Glock. And there's the Glock on top of the Stoger. So as you can see, they're uh, really similarly sized. Okay, the angle's not perfect because the grip angles might be slightly different there. The nose is a little different. It looks like the, well, you, I was going to say it looks like the Glock's a little longer in the grip there, but we're sitting a little lower there with the Glock, so that's why. So again, these will probably fall over if I try to move them. Pretty much the same size there. Pretty much the same width. Pretty much the same length. Although, and it's probably difficult, and these are empty guys, by the way. Um, a little difficult to show on camera there. That's pretty much butted up there. The Glock just a hair longer there in the nose and the barrel length. Yeah, but again, other than millimeters here and there, they're, they're pretty much the same size pistol. So as I said uh, earlier, it breaks down just like the Glocks. So there's the Stoger at the bottom and Glock on top. Okay. Let's compare these slides here. Yep, just a little bit longer on the Glock there. So they both have, well, I don't even think the Glock's stainless. I'm not sure it's got more of a gray hue to it. But the Stoger here has a stainless guide rod. And you got just your single spring here, whereas the Glock, the, excuse me, Glock has a dual or triple setup, it looks like there. There's with the barrels and springs out, Glock on top. And as you can see, again, Glock barrel, just a few millimeters longer there. Then from up top here, this is what I was talking about, why I believe people say it's a Glock clone. Uh, other than some very small, subtle differences, pretty much the same thing. Like the fundamentals here are exactly the same. The rails look the same and whatnot. So I'll give a run through real quick. As you can see, again, other than the Glock being a little longer and subtle little differences, it's pretty much the same inner workings there. So. Uh, one advantage the Glock does have right off the bat, other than the obvious, it being, you know, a Glock. They've been around forever. The aftermarket's amazing for them. Uh, a lot of different magazine options. This one has, pro pro excuse me, proprietary magazine. They are difficult to find, somewhat expensive. Uh, the Glock, this being the G17, holds 17 rounds in the magazine, whereas this only holds 15. Pretty similar controls. There's your mag release on both. Um, let's take a look at the stippling here. I think the, uh, if I can get this to focus, the stippling on the Stoger, definitely a little more aggressive. Okay. Again, obviously they're both striker fire. You got a tactical rail on each. You got, and this is a Gen 4 Glock, by the way. I should have started the video with that for those who are going to ask. So this is a Gen 4. You got front and rear serrations. On the slide on the Stoger whereas the Glock you only have the rear serrations that's not a problem for me because I always rack the slide like this personal preference uh, but for those who do like the front serrations the Glock does not have it at least not on the Gen 4 and I don't think any of the other gens have it either I'm, I'm not like a Glock Pro I could be wrong about that but uh, at least on this Gen 4 here you only have the serrations on the back um, there's your sight picture on the Glock. These are the factory Glock sights, so that's what you get with those. A lot of people don't like these, but I actually rather prefer these sights. Um, I like them a lot. And then your sight picture on the Stoger here. Standard three dot setup there. 
Um, you can get this with tritium sights as well. I'm pretty sure there's sight options with the Glock as well. But your uh, bare bones, no frills, Glock, that's your standard sights. And same with the Stoga here, that's the standard sights on that. I like the mag release on the Stoger better. It's easier for me to reach and a little easier for me to manipulate. I got short stubby fingers, so um, up in there, I'm just barely catching that with the tip of my thumb. I can still get it, but the Stoger is definitely easier to reach for me and easier to work. This thing's not focusing. There we go. Uh, so I, you can see my whole thumb comes down on that instead of just the tip like on the Glock. So I like the mag release on this one better. I mean, it's still discreet and it's not going to really catch on anything, uh, but it's a little further back. So I'm able to get it a little better and it protrudes ever so slightly more. So it's a little easier to manipulate. So let's talk about the triggers now. Uh, obviously very similar triggers. Um, the Glock, although it's a Gen 4 and we bought it a few years ago, um, it's not had that many rounds through it. Maybe 300 some odd rounds. Uh, this is brand new, just got it a few days ago. We have exactly 96 rounds through it, I believe, today. So you know how the triggers will wear in a little bit over time, but they're both low round count. Um, you both, no safety, okay, other than the trigger safety. These are both empty, guys. So you got your trigger safety there. The Glock, I notice, has a, at least it feels like a little shorter take up, and it's a little smoother and a little bit. I wanted to say lighter. Let's check here. Yeah, just a little bit lighter on the Glock. And, I mean, it's about the same length, maybe a hair shorter on the Glock. So there's your take up. And then with the striker on both, you're going to have a little bit of creep as you pull through. Okay, and then the reset. i got to set the phone down for this. All right, and then the trigger reset. I notice on the Stoger is shorter, okay? So there's take up on the Stoger. Pull through is about the same on the reset. Reset on the Stoger is a little bit shorter. Now, a lot of people didn't like these finger grooves on the Glock. Some people did, some people didn't. Uh, there was a lot of complaints about it though. That's why on the fifth gen they went back to just being straight um, I can kind of see why they're better on the Stoger at least for me and I have small hands. Okay, so when I Hold the the Glock I can kind of like feel those finger grooves digging in you can see they kind of not quite the middle of my finger But even with me having small fingers they kind of like ride into my fingers my fingers don't quite fit in between them. On the Stoger, it's not much, but it's a little bit better. Okay? I don't know if you can tell there, but they're a little further down, so my fingers fit in it better. And like I said, I have small hands, so I could see why guys with bigger fingers than me, uh, that would definitely be uncomfortable to them. So the finger grooves on the Stoger are a little bit better there. One thing I forgot to mention in a review video of the Stoger is this does have a loaded chamber indicator that will pop up when there's a round in the chamber. On the Glock, the extractor is exposed on the side and acts as one. Again, if you want to check out the original review video of this, there will be more shots in that video than in this one probably. Uh, link in the description. I think that's about it, guys. So I'm going to get to shooting these two and uh, see which one I'm better with and which one feels better and whatnot. Uh, if I missed anything, feel free to leave it in the comments or ask any questions you might have. But uh, let's get to shooting these things. By the way, I'm going to be running this uh, Bell and Brass here, 124 grain, uh, through both of these. Might run a few of these hollow points. I'm not sure yet. I don't really plan on doing that, but we'll see. Though if you want to see these through the Stoger, I did put a mag of those through uh, a, a mixture of all in the uh, review video of it. Okay, we'll do a little bit of everything out here. Uh, I'm going to walk up there and do a little bit of relaxed shooting about seven yards with both. Uh, try some rapid fire on that gong over there. Then we'll come back here behind the camera. Laser rangefinder confirmed 14.6 yards to those uh, back row of targets from back here behind the camera. Uh, link in the description for that rangefinder if you guys want a, a good budget rangefinder. And then we'll also try to do somewhat of a speedy pace on those targets as well with both. And then we'll come back for a conclusion.
All right, so run the Stoger first here. Seven yards. All right, and now we got the Glock. I got a little carried away there towards the end, but as you can see before I started going too fast, uh, I was doing about the same or a little quicker it seemed with the Glock. I'm going to try a little five round burst with each on that gong right there. So, so far I'm noticing, I, I, as I said, I believe I was just a hair quicker out there on those targets with the Glock. And if I was indeed a little quicker with it, it's because I noticed that it resets after recoil a little quicker. And what I mean by that is uh, with the muzzle flip, it comes back on target just a little bit quicker than that Stoger. Um, the Stoger is heavier and also when you handle it, you notice it's a little more front heavy than the Glock is. Uh, so I expected more recoil with the Glock because it's lighter. Um, I'm not really noticing that. Some of you might notice maybe the Glock's a little more snappy, um, but that lighter weight, and especially with the nose being lighter, it lets me come back down quicker, okay? Whereas with the Stoger being heavier, I don't know, it's, a, it's just, and I'm doing a poor job of showing you, but <laughs> it's just a little more floppy with that heavier slide coming back. Uh, so it just takes a split second longer for me to get back on target with this one than it does with the Glock. So if I did run faster with the Glock, which I believe I did a little bit, uh, that's because I'm liking the recoil impulse and I'm able to get back on target just a smidge quicker with the Glock. I did notice while rapid firing on that gong there just now though, uh, that it's a little bit easier uh, with that Stoger. It seems to stay on target a little better. Now I have no clue where I hit obviously I didn't miss any so maybe the camera will show maybe I was more accurate with the Stoger maybe I wasn't but at least uh, going off a of feeling it seemed a little easier to maintain that rapid fire with the Stoger uh, it's probably due to the better grip I'm not having a trouble at all hanging on to the Glock but uh, the grip is just a little bit better on the Stoger here it's a little more steady in the hand all right, but I'm going to get these set back up, and we will try uh, both back here behind the camera. Again, uh, laser rangefinder confirmed 14.6 yards, so about twice the distance that we were earlier. That's, of course, 14.6 to that back row there. And I just wanted to show you guys the size of these. I mean, these are, you know, they're these bowling pin targets. It's smaller than headshot size again i have small hands and uh, my face is wider than that so these are pretty small targets for 14.6 yards especially that little guy all right first up the stoger i got 15 rounds of each and there's 15 targets exactly uh, excluding the gong there so let's see if we can hit them all without missing with both Oh, there you go. I got carried away with 
the Glock earlier in there, I just got carried away with that one. I got a little irritated there, started missing. I pulled that one high left. The one clear off to the right still standing there. You should have been able to see it hit it, and it was just wobbling, so I, I did hit that. But after I missed that one off to the left, I pulled a little bit, and then I just started screwing up. Swear to you, in the review video, again, link in the description, go check it out. I hit every single one back here without missing. Anyways, let's get settled back down here and uh, knock the rest of these down without missing. There we go, finally got that one. <laughs> that thing's been stubborn all day. It just does not want to go over that last one clear off to the right there. But like I said uh, in the review video, I knocked all those down without missing from back here and that was just me getting carried away there. So uh, gun's definitely capable. Now watch me do better with the Glock, but honestly it should be about even with both back here for me. All right, so now here we go with the Glock. <laughs> I'm really surprised. I definitely did better with the Stoger. Let me load a few more up in here though and try. It looks like the impact on the Glock's a little high left though. So let me compensate for that a little bit here and see if that fixes the issue there and I can get the rest of these. I will also say that um, I'm not having a problem seeing it and hitting it with the Glock sights. But uh, for shooting those small targets out there at basically 15 yards... Uh, the sights on the Stoger are a little more precise for me for doing that. Yeah, she's running a little high there and off to the left, so no discredit to the Glock there. It's just these sights need tweaked a little, so I uh, shouldn't have missed any of those, you know, if I did my job and then also if the sights were on. Let's see if I can get that last little stubborn one over there. There we go. So yeah, like I said in the review video of the Stoger, I got all those first try, 15 rounds, 15 targets, didn't miss any. Uh, so that was just my fault out there. And then the Glock, it wasn't the Glock's fault I was missing those. It was a little high left, so I need to tweak that rear side a little bit. And speaking of that, uh, the Stoger shoots, it's a center hold, meaning, and some people call it a combat hold, I believe. So the bullet, when you're aiming, it literally grazes the top of that front blade in relation to the target down there. Even potentially uh, being where that the top of that white dot is. Um, the Glock, however, at least this one, is a more traditional 6 o'clock hold where the bullet actually goes a little higher over top of that white dot. Um, so let's see here. 6 o'clock on the Glock. I got a glare on my screen there. So if you held the Glock dead center on that thing, uh, 6 o'clock hold, it would put the impact a few inches higher than where that white dot is. Whereas a center hold like the Stoger is here, um, if you put that white dot on the center, that's pretty much where the bullet's going. So there's a difference there with that. A lot of people prefer the 6 o'clock hold with pistols. Personally, I prefer the center hold because I was a rifle shooter first for years and years and years. And uh, generally, rifles are center hold. So, But that's personal preference. Um, obviously pistols generally aren't used for very small targets or long range shooting uh, so that's the reason why a lot of guys like the six o'clock hold um, it also lets you kind of I don't know for some people uh, see the bad guy a little better because you you the bullets going a little higher than the sight is so that frees up your uh, sight picture there whereas this one you would literally have to cover what you want to hit with the the front sight there so it covers your target a little bit so that makes it a little more difficult for some people and one other thing I will say, um, shooting those back there, 15 yards, I did notice I'm a little more steady with the Stoger. I think that has a lot to do with the uh, the heavier weight of it, and especially being in the front. 
it just makes it a little more steady whereas this thing is lighter especially up top and in the front so you notice a little more front sight wobble like that when you're trying to focus in on something small and further out like that so again not really what a pistol's for but i did notice that and it's a subtle difference by the way uh, but like i said i should have been hitting them all with this like i did in the review video and no discredit to the glock i should have been hitting them all with that too from back here uh, it's just because the sights need tweaked a little bit uh, so with that said both of these run <laughs> real good at small targets out there at uh, 15 yards no problem so that pretty much sums it up there guys um Obviously, there's some pros to the Glock, like the aftermarket support, and, you know, everybody makes Glock mags, and the mags are cheaper and more readily available. Um, there's, you know, a lot more aftermarket for the sights, and just anything you could ever want to do to a Glock, you can do to it, obviously. Custom everything. But as far as comparing a factory pistol to a factory pistol, and you got enough mags and all that, so that's not an issue, I would give a slight edge to the Glock, uh, for me personally. Again, just because I noticed that well, when I was closer up there, I'm able to run it just ever so slightly faster. And that's because for me, um, it settles down just a, a smidge faster and then get back on target just a smidge faster. Um, but one advantage that the Stoger here has, other than the obvious huge advantage, the uh, price there is, uh, at least for me, again, uh, the grip's a little bit better there. Uh, so it's a little better at rapid firing. So, you know, if your life's on the line, at least for me, shooting, comparing both of these, um, I would probably be a little better off with this. I don't know. I guess it would depend on where my hits were going out there. Obviously, you know, that's chest size of a man out there when I was rapid firing on that. Um, it seemed more steady and better with this. That doesn't mean necessarily my hits were better. Um, but just going off a of feel, this one's a little better for me, rapid fire, than the Glock. But on not complete rapid fire, I get back on target just a little bit quicker with the Glock. Both have been 100% reliable for me. Uh, like I said, this has had a few hundred rounds through it now. Uh, this one's coming up on close to 200 now with the, the closing of this video. And I've not had issue for... Uh, from either uh, i'm not sure what the glock warranty is 10 years lifetime something like that i'll throw it up the warranty on the stoger is five years so the warranty may be better on the glock uh, but the main takeaway i get from this is that the stoger does everything the glock does and for about half the price so if you want something that's similar capabilities and performance of the glock but you don't want to pay you know five six hundred dollars for a glock I would definitely check the Stoger out because it does, like, again, does everything the Glock could, uh, but for like half the price. I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier in the video. The highest I've ever seen retailers asking for that. $299 for this bare bones version here with just the single mag and the single back strap. Um, seen them on sale for as low as $219, and they're usually in the mid 300s if you have multiple back straps and magazines. I will tell you the Stoger is better built than a Taurus. I also do believe it shoots better. I had the uh, G3 there for a while. I do love that pistol, um, but the Stoger is definitely tighter and uh, you know you can just tell it's a, a better build quality. So for the Stoger being the same price as that Taurus G3, I'd probably go with the Stoger honestly. So you know that's something to consider there too if you're you're not even considering a Glock and you're looking into the $300 range there. Uh, I think the Stoger is probably a better gun for the money there. At uh, Certainly better build quality, but having handled both, it uh, it shoots better than that Taurus too. And while we're comparing guns, I said in the review video of this, again linked in the description, uh, that I am shooting this better than the M&P series. I've owned several M&Ps um, and handled even more, fired even more, including the first and second generations. And most of those were featured on the channel as well. I factored that mostly to... Uh, I like the ergonomics on this a little better, and the trigger, for me at least, I liked it a little better than the M&P. So I was real curious to see um, how it compared to the Glock, and I've always been better with the Glocks, and uh, this thing keeps right up with it. So I would take this over an M&P, especially with the savings, um, but it's, it's running just as good as the Glock out here today, which is actually pretty impressive, especially for the price point. So if you guys want something that does everything a Glock does, and... It doesn't cost Glock price, then I would definitely take a look at the Stoger. But that's going to do it, guys. I don't want to ramble on too much more here. Um, that's my take on it. Uh, check out the review video on that. We got some longer range shots. Uh, both these pistols, I had no problem hitting anything at 50 yards with them and beyond. So, you know, there's no accuracy edge there either. They're both very accurate pistols. 
as I said earlier, I put some of these through the Stoger. I got gel tests on all these and many more 9mm rounds, plus 40, 45, 380, 22. Check out the 9mm gel test playlist on the channel if you want to see these run through gel and more. If you guys are after some steel targets, uh, that gong there is mine. And uh, at the other range, I have a bunch of other targets set up. Um, link in the description from the company I get those from. And I've been buying them for years and years and years. And they have the uh, best prices and perks and quality on steel targets. So if you're looking to get any, definitely check that out. Appreciate you all watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I hope to catch you on the next one.